So over the past three or four months or so, I have done an absolute ton of work to this Mustang. Um, I started out by doing uh, all rust removal from the chassis. I then painted the chassis with a bridge primer that'll last 20 years on a salted bridge. I topped the bridge primer with color matched Raptor liner. So the whole bottom of the car has been bedlined to the same color as the outside of the car. I then installed a set of weld-in subframe connectors, a complete aftermarket suspension from Maximum Motorsport, a $600 big brake kit from a Cadillac ATS is on the front of this car. I also installed an oil cooler from Mishimoto. So the reason I did all that work to the bottom of this car is next month I'm getting married and this was, believe it or not, my wife's idea. And as soon as it came out of her mouth, I was like, absolutely, that's what we're gonna do. We are taking a cross country road trip, 6,500 miles from my house in Akron, Ohio, basically making a giant loop around the country, seeing all the stuff that we wanna see. Um, but our ultimate destination is Monterey, California. The reason we're going to Monterey, California is for a track day at Laguna Seca. So this car is gonna be driven 6,500 miles round trip with a track day in between. I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that I'm not gonna have any issues along the way. And if something does go sideways on me, I'm gonna be the first person to know about it. All right, so this is the stock gauge cluster in this Mustang. And Ford during this generation was hysterically bad about telling the driver important information that's actually going on with the vehicle. So case in point, down here in the bottom right corner, this is the oil pressure gauge. This is not actually an oil pressure gauge. This car has an oil pressure switch that turns on at six PSI. So if the car has more than six PSI of oil pressure, this gauge goes to the middle. The voltage information is hysterically way off. The coolant temp has no temperature information on it. So the speedo, okay. The tac, okay. Fuel gauge, okay. But the rest of this really doesn't tell you a whole heck of a lot. So when you're in a 6,500 mile road trip and doing a track day, you need information. So this is what I'm using to display all the information that Ford either wouldn't tell me or the vehicle doesn't even have information for it. What this is, this is a Banks iDash. The iDash plugs in down at the OBD2 port, down underneath the dash, plugs into that. And what this thing does, is it'll display any parameter on basically any vehicle that is 2008 or newer. So all of your sensor information, all your vehicle information, it will read codes, it will clear codes. There is a ton of capability built into this little gauge. I will show you guys, this little gauge will display any parameter on your vehicle, like I said, as long as the vehicle is 2008 or newer. Now, in the case of this particular Mustang, this car is a 2001. Therefore, ordinarily, the iDash isn't compatible with a vehicle like this, but I did some work to this thing to be able to make it work on an older vehicle like this. So let's dive into that a little bit. All right, so over here in the corner, I have two Banks four channel analog modules. What these are is this is how I'm getting the information to the iDash in this car. So for example, ordinarily an iDash just plugs into the OBD2 port, reads the information off the OBD2 port, but because this car is so old and so primitive, this car doesn't even have oil pressure information because it doesn't even exist in the computer. So therefore, I have to wire in my own sensor to get oil pressure, oil temperature, all the information that I'm looking for. So each one of these four channel analog modules, like it says, accepts up to four additional sensors. So you can daisy chain up to six of these analog modules together and add 24 additional sensors plus everything that you can read off the OBD2 port. So there's a ton of expandability with this product. And uh, I'm gonna take you guys through some of the sensors that I have on this car and what exactly I'm reading here. 
So take a look at the bottom of the car here. These are all my engine oil sensors. So my engine oil pressure, all my temperature sensors for the engine oil. Um, this is the factory oil pressure sensor, if you will. You know, that pressure switch I was talking about earlier. The factory has a test port uh, built into the boss that I just took out the blank plug, threaded the sensor into the test port, and I'm reading oil pressure right where the factory does. Um, in addition to that, so this is oil pressure coming back from the cooler. So we'll get into it in a second, but I'm able to see the difference between these two pressure sensors on the iDash. So if one of these loses pressure, I'll get an alert for it. Taking a look at the back back here, this is my oil filter adapter that sends the oil to the cooler, but my oil filter adapter has ports in it for sensors. So I'm reading oil temperature going into the cooler, oil temperature coming out of the cooler, and what is actually going into the engine. So I'm reading what's coming out of the sump. After it's been cooled, I'm reading what's going in back into the engine. So over here on the driver's side, this is where I'm pulling my coolant temperature information. And the factory in this location had a blank plug here for a block drain, and the block drain was 3 8 NPT. So all I did was I pulled out the block drain for the coolant, threaded in a 3 8 NPT sensor, and it threaded right in and hooked it up. So now I have coolant temp information, all of my oil pressure information is up front. Let's keep working our way back in the car. So back at the trans, I have transmission fluid temp as well. So all I did was I took the half inch uh, NPT plug out of the transmission, put a half inch NPT bushing and a eighth inch sensor in it, stuck it right in the bottom of the trans, and now I have trans temp information. So finally back here at the diff cover, this is a 2012, 2013 Boss 302 and 2013 to 2014 GT500 diff cover. Those cars, some of them came equipped with a factory differential cooler. And this cooler, or this cover I should say, has plugs for a drain and then there's another one for the return on a factory differential cooler car. So all I did was I took the drain out, threaded in another half inch NPT bushing, threads right into the cover, and threaded my sensor into that. Works perfectly, so now I have I have fluid temperatures for every single fluid on this car with the exception of power steering fluid. So this sensor right here that's zip tied to the front of the car, believe it or not, this is a full weather station. This is the Banks Air Mouse. This thing will record, obviously, temperature, humidity, precipitation. It also calculates density altitude, among a bunch of other different stuff. The iDash can then take that information and give you additional parameters that you're able to view. So all these wires I have zip tied to various points in the chassis. So this one for the rear differential comes up here, goes right along the subframe connectors. And I did have to buy an extension to make it reach, you know, all the way to the back of the car. But if you come up here and look, all these wires come up and they end up right in that harness that goes up into the engine compartment. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm actually monitoring with the iDash and all those sensors that we just went over. So up here at the top is engine coolant temp, engine oil temp, engine oil pressure, and battery voltage. So this is sort of my main screen that I'm monitoring at any given point. Um, this is the one that I'm paying attention to the most when I'm going down the road. Um, as far as the gauge itself, so all this stuff in here is configurable. So if you notice, there's a bar graph down there at the bottom that bar graph will move with um, the battery voltage, just like you know all these bar graphs will move with temperature and pressure and stuff like that. So all of this stuff that you see on the screen is completely configurable. So you can change the color of the, the bar graph, the color of the background, the color of the font, how many gauges you want on a screen. So I could put eight gauges on a screen if I wanted to. Um, it really just depends on how you want this thing set up. So this is how I typically have things set up. That yellow alert that keeps popping up, that is a background alert. So what that background alert is telling me is I have predetermined thresholds on each one of these parameters and even parameters that you can't see right now. So right now the engine's off, the engine's cool. The engine coolant temp is only 82 degrees. What that is telling me, it pops an alert until the engine coolant temp gets above a certain threshold so I know as a driver, hey, 
don't beat on this thing because the engine's not warm. On the other side of that coin, I can also program an alert if it goes too high. If it gets too hot, it'll say, hey, it'll pop up with an alert just like that, letting me know to back off the throttle and see what's actually going on. So going through some of these pages here, like I said, this is kind of my main screen that I pay attention to the most. The second screen is really a clone of the first one. Um, the main difference is this one matches my factory gauges at night. So when I turn my headlights on, the factory gauges glow green, and this stuff will glow green at night. Now, the reason all this stuff is blinking is because the background alert. So the parameters that I'm monitoring are below what they should be right now. That's why they're blinking. So continuing on, this is what I'm mainly going to monitor out on the track. So this is engine coolant temp, engine oil temp, transmission temp, and differential temp. These are all my main temperatures that I'm concerned with. If I have an issue with oil pressure, it's going to pop up with an alert up here at the corner, just like it is right now with battery voltage and oil pressure. So I don't necessarily have to be staring at and viewing what I'm concerned with. I can program a background alert to alert me that something that I'm not monitoring has gone haywire. This page here is all air information. So this is all the air information coming off of the air mouse. So this is ambient air temperature, relative humidity, dew point, density altitude, and ambient air pressure. There's also a ton of other different things that this air mouse allows you to do. So it's able to actually calculate SAE testing standards versus ambient air conditions. So if you have a super cool dry day, it's able to correlate that with an SAE testing standard. So that way you know what your current ambient weather conditions are in relation to an SAE testing standard. This final page that I have here, this is all oil information. So this is oil temperature out of the oil pan. This is oil temperature coming out of the oil cooler. This is oil pressure into the oil cooler. This is oil pressure out of the oil cooler. And this finally down here at the bottom is differential oil pressure of the oil cooler. So because I have inlet and outlet pressure on the oil cooler, the iDash is able to calculate the differential pressure between the two. So for example, let's say I'm driving down the road and one of my oil lines blows off my oil cooler. This differential pressure is going to skyrocket because one of these pressures is going to be much higher than the other. I can set a background alert for differential oil pressure that it'll pop an alert no matter what screen I'm on to say, hey, your differential oil pressure has gone crazy. See what's going on. And it's going to tell me way before this thing ever does that something has gone haywire and it's possibly going to save me an engine. All right, so there's one other thing about this gauge that we need to talk about. So the gauge in particular that I have in this Mustang is the Data Monster. And the Data Monster has data logging capability. They make two versions of this gauge. They make the Super Gauge and they make the Data Monster. The Data Monster, like I said, is able to do data logs. So if you have a Data Monster, you can play back the recordings one of two ways. You can play it back on the screen on the iDash or if you pull out the SD card and you go to datalogviewer.com, this is a site that is ran by banks. You can take your file from your iDash, upload it into the website, and you can analyze everything about your data log. So what I did was I just went around the block. I did a real quick data log, like five minutes or so, and this is what I got. So I'm just going to put some stuff in here so we have something to look at. So I have engine coolant temp, diff fluid temp, engine oil temp, engine oil pressure out of the cooler. So this is super useful for guys that are doing racing or guys that are trying to develop their vehicle and take it to the next level. Because if you have an issue, um, let's say, for example, I take this car out on the track and my differential starts to overheat, I can see exactly when it starts to happen. 
And I can correlate that with ambient conditions. So is it something related to ambient conditions or is it simply overheating because of a lack of airflow? I can figure all of that out if I analyze this data. So in a way, guys, it could also help you save some money on your equipment because it's going to keep you from doing mods that you don't need to do. All right, guys, so that is what I have on the iDash install on this particular Mustang. And as I told you guys, I'm going on an extraordinarily long road trip with this car, doing a track day. So like I said, I want to be well informed as to what's going on with this thing at any given point. Um, as far as the trip itself, I'm kind of 50-50 on whether or not I'm going to record it. If I am going to record it, I'm probably going to make another channel for it. The thing is, it's my honeymoon and I really don't want to spend three weeks out on the road thinking about making a YouTube video the whole time. So, like I said, I may take bits and pieces of it and throw it up on this channel, or I may just make a separate channel entirely and just throw it up over there. Haven't really decided yet. But guys, I'll have links down in the description uh, to the iDash, to the four channel analog modules, as well as the sensors, if you guys are working with something older like this. As always, guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you want to see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.